We are focusing unabashedly on the Six Nations this week on the Dirt Trackers Rugby Show, episode number seven. And we dropped into Carton House to talk to some of the Irish guys, Declan Kidney, Paul O'Connell, Connor Murray and Sean O'Brien, as we look forward to the Irish game against France at the weekend and what basically is a make-or-break game for Ireland's Six Nations season. In a few moments we're going to catch up with Rory Keane down in Auckland, New Zealand and chat to him about the weekend's action that's coming up. But first of all, we want to give a special mention to Connor Trainer, who we spoke to on the show last week. He ended up scoring four tries for Canada in the Wellington Sevens as they got to the quarter-final stage. This weekend, it's the USA Sevens in Las Vegas, so good luck to Connor and all the rest of the guys with Canada. But first up, here's my chat with Rory. Um, okay, Rory, how's it going this week? Uh, you're, you're still in pre-season training with Ponsonby? Yeah, st- still in one piece, no pet. Uh, getting there slowly but surely, but uh, getting... Definitely getting an education down here anyway on how to play the game and, you know, it's, it's been good so far anyway. And, um, yeah, sure, we won't take up too much of your time, we'll let you get back to the ice bath after this. Yeah. So what did you, what was the, the take uh, down in New Zealand and the, the Southern Hemisphere on the, the weekend's opening action in the Six Nations? Uh, same as, probably the same as the World Cup, um, huge praise for Wales down here and their enterprise really, there seems to be... Uh, especially in the Herald and on, on TV1, the, the sports anchors there have all been talking about it, about how impressive Wales were. And the thing that really came through down here was how, like how many forwards they were missing. You know, they were missing, geez, there were some Lions, there guys like Devin Jenkins, Elowin Jones, Dan Lydiot was a huge find for them last season. Luke Charters, who was, you know, I mean, what would it be, you know, he's one of probably the most improved players at the World Cup. You know, just incredible work rate. Missing all these guys, and yet the last war burden at half time, and that was it. But the one thing about I was watching um, TV three the other night, uh, one of the sports shows, and what they were talking about on it was they just could not. The Kiwis there now, guys like Mark Ellis and Justin Marshall run. They could not get over the size of the Welsh backs and their physicality. Like like Sean Edwards said. Um, Sean Edwards, we all remember Sean Edwards said about a month after the World Cup finished, you know, in hindsight, he thought Wales would have taken the All Blacks in the final simply for the size of their backs. But that's the thing that stood out down here and it definitely stood out to me. It's just they dominated Ireland out wide in the physical stakes. Every time they seemed to take the ball into contact, they broke the gain line and put the, put the tackle on their own terms. And that was basically it, you know. And, um, England getting slated down here as usual, but like I mean, the Kiwis just have they really don't like the English down here. It's incredible, like and um, obviously France. You know they they don't really talk about France much. They they don't want to bring up the final left. What happened, like? But um, basically, it's way it's Wales and their enterprise, which seems to be a big story down here. Yeah, I suppose just um, even even looking at it from afar, like yourself. Um it was worrying that the Welsh could just march 70 or 80 metres up. Uh, they just kept gaining yards each time they went into contact right at the in the last few minutes. It, it was incredible, Pat, wasn't it? They just, they just, I could not, couldn't believe, you know, these just monster, monster and Leinster players, their guys who were so experienced and they looked powerless that last 10 minutes. You know, they had the game eight points up and Wales almost just basically got into huddle and said, right lads, we're going to do A, B and C, we're going to go up there, we're going to score a try and even like, but they just didn't seem to be. They couldn't even. They didn't even learn the lessons. They seemed, didn't seem to learn the lessons of Wellington. Like you could, George North, he had his moments in Wellington in that match, as I remember. But they just they had no plan. They had no way of stopping him. You know, they when he came into the line, he kind of drifted in behind the outside centre channel very late. They just couldn't seem to deal with him. And obviously, the question has to be asked again about Sean O'Brien at seven. Sometimes I was watching his lines of running off scrums and lineups and. He just doesn't, people are going to disagree with me here now, definitely, but he just does not look like a seven when he's running around the pitch. It's just he doesn't have it in him. He doesn't seem to have that nature to run those lines. It's just it's little subtle things like for that, for uh, to Alice Nolan, really could have done anything for Jonathan Davies' try. He was this absolute genius from George North. And for that try, if you watch, if, you, if anyone goes back watch the highlight, watch Sean O'Brien's line off it, like, David Wallace could give a master class in it. You basically it's off a of, off a set play like that. You basically run it's almost kind of a like kind of a like if you're jaywalking across the street, the number seven basically has to get into the middle of the field just behind the centres to cover that break. And Sean O'Brien, he's just basically he's he's a blo- he's a six wearing a seven. He just was he he, he knew where he was going really. I'm not blaming Sean O'Brien for that try, but 
you know, it does exactly as I said there. They, they didn't seem to be, have, a be, have a way of stopping them. And if you look at Ireland, okay, our centre is a solid, but Ireland, not a small team. It was massive back row. Bo's a big guy. Trimble's a big guy. Carney's physical. But Wales just seem to be at another level to us. And, you know, there's obviously question marks about Stephen Ferris. You know, it was, it's been overturned during the week. It was a bad decision by, you know, Wayne Barnes. But at the end of the day, I just thought, watching that game, I just thought Wales, like in Wellington, four months ago, they just looked like they had more about them, more endeavour, faster in mind, looked like, you know, I mean, and you just think, I think it was, I, I think that game was close because of the forwards Wales were missing. I mean, I think if Wales has been a full strength, they would have won that game comfortably. Yeah, yeah, and I was out at the um, the Irish press conferences there this weekend, um, yeah, let's just take a listen because uh, there was still a little bit of a hangover from the weekend, of course. Philippe is a good coach and, um, you know, it's, a, it's only this week that he's really getting his hands on them. So I would admit he started from getting his cornerstones right, which I was impressed by getting their defence strong. And I'm sure he'll have added into the into that this week. And you just look at the changes they're able to make, and you don't know if gee, is, it, is, that, is that stronger or weaker. That's just a you know that's just the challenge of it. But these these are fantastic matches. These are the ones that uh, you have to be slightly off off balance, I suppose, to look forward to them. But uh, they're fantastic occasions and the uh, ones you really want to look forward to. And, you know, there's nothing like playing the World Cup finalists in their own backyard to, to bounce back from last Sunday. Paul, are you looking forward to meeting Vincent Clair again? Uh, not really. Obviously, he's a world-class player, um, um, and as Declan said, you know, if we have if we make those silly mistakes, those 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 errors, and turn over ball easily to the French, he's the kind of guy that can punish you. Um, He's an excellent player, an excellent finisher. Um, obviously, has a great try scoring record. So, you know, we need to be miserly with any ball we give the French and, and Vincent Clerk in particular. Declan, with uh, regard to Sean O'Brien, is there any logic uh, to go to former players or injured players at the moment to get some advice on something that could help his game at the moment, or do you kind of consider him close to the finish arc? Um, um, no, I don't. I don't think as regards going to other players. Like Sean, Sean is actually, he's a really good professional. He would be seeking out all types of information himself, and certainly in a six-day turnaround, uh, there's only so much that you can take on. You need to let the body rest up, because of the fact that we that we had um, that we probably encouraged Wales to run at us so much, we had to probably make a few more tackles than we normally do. So it was important to let the bodies rest up for, you know, 24, 48 hours after that. We've taken a look at what we could do to improve ourselves. Sean is. Um, Sean is he's such a good professional he'll just take a look at the video and you don't have to tell him you, you have to tell him very little really he he, know, he knows it but uh, like that's not to say that we don't work on li- different things and that we won't go outside to get help if we feel we need it but um, not that we didn't do it specifically for this week but I don't feel there's a need to OK there we go that was the view from the Irish camp and uh, of course we're looking forward to the France game now at the weekend and I, I, get, I get a sense that before that game against Wales, there was the same type of you know feeling, definitely in the air that Ireland had to beat in Wales again, probably unfounded as as it of course proved. But I get the sense now again that Ireland are under siege, and it's it's similar again as you and I probably uh, could recall with the situation that happened before the Australia game over in the World Cup. Um, they're getting a lot of flack now, but they have a chance to go in as underdogs and and cause an upset. It's it's a good theory, Pat. Like- you know, we were there, you know, they were kind of blocked away and out in the outskirts of Auckland in this kind of very, you know, quiet hotel and you could see the players were like caged animals for that week. But the fundamental differences between that game against Australia and Auckland and this game in Paris is that game in Auckland was, it was incredible. The atmosphere there, the Irish presence, the Kiwis got in behind them. It was a very much, as a, I thought it was very much a one-off, you know, the drizzle was coming down and I don't think... You know, I think that Irish pack completely underperformed against Wales. I just don't think they can bully that French pack on a very cold day in Paris. You know, the, you know, they're, you know, I, I just don't think they have it in them to do it. And I hope I'm proved wrong. And you have to look at our look at our pack. You know, if O'Connell, O'Connell gets up to the level we know he can. Roy Best playing the best rugby of his career. We have a, we have a world class back row. They can just gel and play the way we know they can play. But you know, it's a tough one. But it would be it would be amazing for them to go and do it, but I, I, as I said, like I, I've heard people refer to that Paris as a graveyard for Irish rugby. I mean, we won there once in forty years, so you know the outlook. It's a good theory. Like I mean, this Irish team does seem to perform better 
over the last 24 months we've seen it, the game against England in March, the game against Australia. They do seem to perform well when they're under the cosh, but it's a huge ask again in, against France and Paris, Pat. Yeah, yeah. So listen, let's just check in quickly with the, the word from the Irish camp and just what a few of the guys are saying about the game that's coming up now this weekend before they set off for Paris. Do you surprise Sean, um, with the World Cup final, just considering how they played in the lead-up to it, were you surprised with how well France played and put it up to the All Blacks? No, not really, you know, because they're such an unpredictable side. Um, you know, they can go out, they can get through a competition, I say, like the World Cup, um, playing not so good rugby, and then they can just turn it around in, a, in an instance like the final, you know. Um, you know, they could have won that final, no hassle, but... Um, you know, that's that's the type of that's the type of bunch of lads they are, you know, they're a talented bunch of players, you know, they're unpredictable, um, you know, they can score from anywhere. So, you know, we just have to be um every 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 team that comes up against them just has to be on their uh, I suppose nearly nearly at their best, you know, to beat them. Connor, um, how close to perfect do you have to be to beat the French over in Paris? I think you just gotta limit your mistakes and limit turnovers as much as possible really, yeah. It's um yeah, again, you just got to focus on your own game and try and, as, as a, in any game, you know, try and make as as, as few mistakes as you can. Yeah, I mean, you upset with like a few little kind of just small errors that kind of probably cost you a good bit of uh, momentum last Yeah, time. probably that end field position. Yeah, yeah. We, I think we just got to be a bit smarter this week, and and if we're not if we're not making the edge, you know, I think we got to look to get a bit more territory this week and stuff like that, you know, because we can't be given. Obviously, Wales are very dangerous as are the French, you know, giving them ball in our in our half is quite dangerous. And then just Rory, we're looking forward then to the other games that are coming up this weekend. Um, you see Parks has kind of retired already. They, they, a lot of people said he jumped before he was pushed. Um, and then he had some other big games that are coming up. The, the Welsh were looking to kind of uh, follow up you know, with a, with a win against the Scots now as well. And, and then the English um, taking on the Italians. Yeah, I'm telling you, like Italy, and, Italy and England, a lot, of pe- a lot of people might think that could be an absolute snore fest. That could be the game of the tournament. Because England... Italy, they've got their scalps, you know, it's only ourselves and England left to beat in the Six Nations. They beat everyone else. They beat France last year. They beat Wales and Scotland twice in the, in, since they joined the Six Nations. You know, you know, England, I don't, England, you know they were doggers against Scotland, but it's, it's in the Stadio Olimpico as well. It's going to be absolutely hopping. It's a fantastic stadium. It's completely different to their, to their old stadium. And uh, they've got Jack Brunel as a coach. I mean, they, you know, they were a run the garage drop goal away from beating us last year and they, they'll be looking at England there going, you know, we can take them. And, you know, the Italian backs got a bit of flack last week, but I think, you know, they've, they've got a few gems there. Seriously, I think if Brunel, Brunel needs about 12 months of them, but I've heard great things about this guy. Uh, is it Giovanni Battista Van de Tee? I've heard him believe. I've heard very good things about him from their, their, their expecting you things from him. They're saying he's the best three quarter they've produced in about a decade. And then you have Ben Benuti and Massey. I mean, you know, if they could just find and if they could just find halfbacks, I think they're not too far away from being a really good side. And then you've obviously got, like, you know, Wales. We'll see. We're, we're going to see if Wales are going to kick on against Scotland. But traditionally, those games are very, very tight. And I think Andy Robinson made a huge mistake putting Laidlaw in there for Park Last week, Laidlaw is a very good player. He might make that backline tick, but you know, Scotland, their conversion rate is terrible. I mean, they just can't seem to put in that last pass, but that, that's going to be another very interesting game. It's going to be an interesting game all around at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose listen, we'll, um, we, we can chat again next week, but uh, let's hope that when we do talk next, we're, we, we have, like, if we're talking about Ireland, they're still a relevant team in the Six Nations this year. Yeah, you're an optimist by nature, Pat. I'll hand that, boy. Alright, listen, cheers for that, Rory. Thanks, Pat.